The Northern Rivers region of New South Wales and Australia's east coast has some of the best surfing beaches in the world and a laid-back culture of outdoor fun. We love to be out in the sun, we love to um, communicate and talk and have fun and go surfing. But lurking in this pristine ocean is its most feared predator, the great white shark. I knew it was no normal normal shark. I knew it was a monster. The coast near Australia's most easterly point has become a hot spot for shark attacks, stoking the primal fear of being eaten alive. On this beach we've had four shark attacks in the last ten years, three in the last two years. With great whites spotted almost daily, some are demanding a cull of these protected creatures. The amount of sharks that are out there now, we have to do something. It's like a plague of rats. What do you do with a plague of rats? You've got to get rid of them, don't you? For many Australians, surfing is close to a religion. And here in subtropical northern New South Wales, surf culture is thriving. So how are the boys surfing today? Yeah, mate, they're doing really good. Yeah. yeah. Some fun waves, starting to get a bit better, the tide's lower. And, uh, this is the young, this is the cadets, so they're, they're going really good. Here, surfing and the beach are more than just fun and sport. It's a billion dollar industry that supports the local economy. This contest is under the watchful eye of former world junior champion James Wood, who teaches kids to surf. He says the local shark problem is out of control. Yeah, we just kind of we want something done before one of the kids, or been, there's already been some kids attacked, but you know more kids get attacked, and you know we have another death. Just beyond the surf line, a drone keeping a lookout for sharks has spotted something in the water. A large shoal of fish known as a bait ball. So what are we looking at, Marty? We're just watching a couple of dolphins chasing some bait balls out of it. Oh, that's a big bait ball. I just sat over it now, just having a look, making sure this, there's no other creatures out there. Has there been anything that we didn't want out there that you've seen today? Not today, no. It's been really good though because the water's, the clarity in the water's really good. With no effective deterrent in place, surfing clubs like this are relying on surveillance to protect their surfers. The whole shark thing's front of mind all the time, so it just means that you know, anybody gets spooked. It doesn't take much for everybody else to just latch onto that. Everybody clears the water, but you just can't take that risk because there's been so many attacks. Situated at the mouth of the Richmond River, the town of Ballina used to be famous in Australia as the home of the big prawn. But nowadays, a great white shark might be more appropriate. What began as a rare spate of shark attacks has become the norm. And this spring, the region entered its third straight year as a deadly hotspot for great white sharks. This morning saw its fourth major incident. In late September, on the first day of the school holidays, a great white shark attacks a teenage surfer. 17-year-old Cooper Allen has been taken to hospital with a nasty bite. It was a lucky escape. A local surfer, Dan Webber, witnessed the attack on Cooper. And then all of a sudden I see Cooper swimming backwards away from the shark, which is, has gone over there. And so I then look over there and I see a massive dorsal fin, like this, this big. I said, are you OK? And he said, yeah, 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 I'm all right. In that moment, we all turned to look out at where the shark was, turned in unison. You know? And that put a chill through me because I just thought, oh, we're still in danger. <laughs> you know? At the mouth of the Richmond River, Ballina's lighthouse beach is renowned for its great waves. And Dan has been surfing here for more than 25 years. And so you jump in at, at the south end of the beach and jump into this current that drags you out. It's a little river, so that makes it nice and convenient to paddle out to the back. Then you come in from behind and uh, 
In the south swell, like what we've got at the moment, the waves are running down the beach, which is fun. So you get a nice long wall to ride along. While this beach is a big draw for surfers, it's fast gaining a reputation as a magnet for sharks. Along this one stretch of sand, Dan has personally witnessed two attacks in just 15 months. Surfers have been criticised for putting themselves at risk, but Dan doesn't blame them. Most of the shark attacks have been in really beautiful, sunny conditions like today, crystal clear water. So, um, you know, to say that we have to um, uh, be more careful when we surf, I think that's uh, misguided. It's not only Ballina's beaches that are threatened. Adjacent to Lighthouse Beach, the Richmond River itself is teeming with sharks. Well, there's somebody paddling across now. I can't believe he's doing it on his own. That's brave. It's, um, it's not often that somebody paddles across. And the thing is now I'm, I'm concerned about that guy and so I don't want to leave until I know he's actually got across. I shouldn't be worried, but you can't help it. Here's a memorial for Peter Edmonds, who was attacked here in 2008. He passed away having been attacked by a bull shark just out here at North Wall. We're about there. Just out there. He just wanted to catch waves. Just, That's all he wanted. He, he just wanted to have fun. And he wanted to be a carpenter and travel around Australia and surf. That was his whole life. Yeah. Eight years ago, 16-year-old Peter Edmonds left his parents' home to surf with friends at Ballina's Lighthouse Beach and never came home. The teenager was attacked by a huge bull shark and rapidly died from massive blood loss. His family were devastated. Both their daughters have, have struggled to, mm. to accept it and to move on with their lives. You know, it's, um, it's, it, it's, it's been very difficult for mm. them, I think, um, to just to come to terms with it. It stuffs your life up. Completely. It just but does, because you, 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 you've got to keep going. <laughs> it's it's just... You know, you've, there's always something that's missing. Mm. Yesterday, Jabez Reitman was attacked at Seven Mile Beach. Since Peter's death, the region's shark problem has steadily worsened. And with each new attack, his family relive the horrors of that day. They say human lives must be put first and that the government needs to do more to protect beach users. That's one of the reasons why we have been standing up is so parents or family don't have to go through what we've gone through. We, we, it's really it's harrowing. horrific. It's, it's yeah. harrowing. The state government say they are listening to families like the Edmonds, but the difficulty is deciding what can be done. With a community in crisis, respected shark experts like Vic Penamores have been brought in to try to understand why the region's beaches have become so deadly. The whole feeling of the town has changed dramatically as a result of a series of shark bites in, in relatively short um, period. It's not a situation where, like with bull sharks, where we find they're moving up and down the east coast of Australia in a relatively defined manner. With white sharks, the only way I can describe it is like dropping a bag of marbles. They just go bang and they go off in all directions. We've had them go out to New Zealand and back. So it's, it's really quite complex for us to try to understand what's going on. Scientists don't have reliable estimates of exactly how many great whites are living off Australia's east coast. Here, great whites have been protected by law since 1997, and many believe the shark population has exploded as a result. But Vic Petamores isn't so sure. White sharks, as an apex predator, reproduce slowly, reproduce late in life, and have relatively few young. So there's, a, there's only a few of those pups that are born that actually make it back into the next generation. And I know that there's a lot of people out there who don't believe that and who say there's been this massive boom in the population. Um, but biologically speaking, it's highly unlikely. 
A marine species which is definitely experiencing a dramatic recovery in numbers is Australia's humpback whale. Its migration is a spectacle that's clearly visible from Ballina's cliff tops. Moving along the east coast, their migration attracts thousands of tourists. But with young whale calves in tow, it's also a powerful magnet for hungry great whites and maybe one reason for the rise in shark attacks. Paramedics work frantically to stabilise Ballina local Matthew Lee when both legs were mauled. While the debate rages over why shark attacks are on the rise, coastal communities have been left scarred by a series of horrific encounters. A man has been killed in a shark attack while swimming at Byron Bay as his wife waited on the beach. In September 2014, 50-year-old Paul Wilcox was stalked and killed by a great white shark just 15 metres from the beach at Byron Bay. The great white attack was also... A helicopter captured these pictures of a massive great white swimming nearby. They remained on high alert. Three sharks were spotted along the coast. Incredibly, even as the victim's body lay covered on the beach, people continued to swim. I mean, we swim with them all the time. We're in their backyard. We know they're there. While the debate rages over why shark attacks are on the rise, some surfers now choose not to surf alone. You get the crowd sticking together. It's, um, it's rare that you have somebody um, separating from the crowd. You know, you, you feel safety in numbers, obviously. Has that always been the case? Uh, no, no, no way. You know, it was, um, it's only since the shark situation that people have huddled together so much. You know, it's um, for obvious reasons. But I mean, um, personally, I feel as though there's no difference between being in the crowd other than you cutting down your, your risk. From the lookout above the town's beaches, it's clear to see why Ballina's surfers are so spooked. On this beach, we've had four shark attacks in the last 10 years, three in the last two years. Just here, shortly after nine in the morning on what was otherwise a perfect day in February 2015, Tadashi Nakahara, a Japanese surfer, had his legs bitten off by a great white shark at Ballina's Shelley Beach. The mortally wounded surfer was carried to shore by Darren Rogers. I saw straight away him underwater and his head was at a, at a very odd angle. And I saw that both his legs were gone. Um, very, very close to, the, to his hips. I thought, oh, I'm in big trouble here because standing in this water. There's a guy that's just been attacked. Medical help arrived fast, but Tadashi's injuries were so severe that he died on the beach in Darren's arms. I couldn't put his head back down in the sand. I felt like I couldn't walk away. Um, it was a very emotional point. The, uh, they, anyway, Eventually I had to because the police told me I had to let go and so I, I sort of said goodbye and put his head down. Um, just take a breath. Um. Originally from Japan, Tadashi Nakahara had settled in Ballina to be close to the sea and was a much loved member of its surfing community. A memorial was built overlooking the spot where he died. Darren, who was awarded a bravery medal for his efforts to try to save Tadashi, is a regular visitor. You've got New Zealand is beach just here. Just a few months after Tadashi's attack at nearby Evans Head, Craig Ison went out with a friend for an early morning surf. Still there, still a there. Good morning. A surfer is being treated in hospital. Barely a minute later, he was fighting for his life with a great white shark. Turned around and punched the shark. Here it is, come for me. Up in the air, having me left shoulder like, like that. I'm sitting there like on the board like that, and he's come for me just like that. He launched himself in the air to catch up with me because we would have made it to the shore. When I remember getting after getting hit, because uh, here I am. This finger's out here, so there's blood pouring out everywhere. 
I've got this shark on his head going do, 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 on my leg, you know, it's half thrashing like a DC. Oh, I'm dead. His legs severely mauled, Craig fought back. And the third punch just gave everything. And, and, and I hit him and I went and hit him again and he stopped, oh, he stopped thrashing. And he just went lit. And it, next thing he started sliding off me, his top jaw fell off me, wasn't it? Look, he's out, out cold, just fell off him. Dragged to shore by a friend gushing blood, he underwent emergency surgery and spent weeks in hospital. Wow. Wow. Is it there? That was, his, that was his first hit. He nearly got me leg. See how close he went? He nearly got me whole leg on my first go. And then, then, then he went to grab me a second time and got his bottom jaw stuck underneath his board because I'm sitting on my board like this. And his top jaw's up here and he's just shaking his head. Like a fucking saw carving a hole in your leg. Aerial sightings are reported almost daily here, and new sensor boys deployed offshore detect sharks that have previously been caught and electronically tagged. Recently, those boys have been sounding the alarm for Ballina's beaches almost constantly. But could and should more be done? And most controversially, should sharks be culled? People want to cull, people want to net, people want to leave them alone. You know, it's, it's, it's a huge political situation. Shark expert Vic Pedemores agrees that it is a complex, divisive dilemma. It isn't an easy debate. It's very emotional and it's up to the government to try to steer a middle course between those two views and hopefully that middle course will lead to results that um, will appease both sides. This is buoy number seven to be set off South Ballina. Faced with immense pressure, the New South Wales State Government has launched the most extensive shark research and mitigation program in the world. In trying to find a balance and protect marine life, scientists have been trialling non-lethal methods like smart drum lines, baited hooks suspended from floats that alert scientists when a shark is caught so that it can be tagged and released far offshore. Survey operations at Lighthouse Beach, all traffic down. High-tech drones are also being trialled to detect sharks moving closer to shore. But as scientists scramble to learn more about sharks, some locals feel like they're part of a deadly experiment. The problem is we know relatively little about not only the sharks themselves, but what their movements are, what their behaviour is. That's for normal sharks. Now we are trying to understand what does an aberrant shark do? I mean, you can imagine it's just like an order of magnitude more difficult when you don't even know what a, what a, good, a good shark does. So it's, it will take time, but I understand the, 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 the concerns from the community saying that they don't want to be part of an experiment. If the waters off Ballina are a laboratory, there are great white sharks aplenty. We spotted a great white on our first boat trip, cruising less than 150 metres off Lighthouse Beach. An antenna clearly visible, this shark had already been electronically tagged so its whereabouts can be monitored. Worryingly, it did not set off the beach's detector buoy, but it did provoke an immediate response. OK, so the beach will be closed for half an hour. Um, following the shark sighting, I'll let our drone pilots know to keep a lookout. So um, we'll have two drones in the sky for this 10 minutes. Yep. Just days after we filmed here, a great white struck again. Jay Fitzpatrick was waiting for a wave when a shark knocked him off his brand new surfboard and... A man narrowly escaped serious injury. With three attacks in just six weeks, the New South Wales government was forced into action, announcing that it will deploy old-style shark nets off far north coast beaches by mid-December 2016. Elsewhere in Australia, like Queensland's Gold Coast, just an hour and a half drive north from Ballina, shark nets have been used for decades to protect beach users. 
but they are highly controversial because they indiscriminately kill a large variety of marine life and their actual effectiveness at preventing shark attacks is questioned. People have this concept, this idea that these nets are somehow a protection device designed to stop sharks getting to the beach. And this is absolutely not the case. We can see here um, 186 metres of, of net anchored at, at each end. Um, these are set parallel to the beach and they are in no way going to stop any wildlife getting, getting to the beach. The International Marine Wildlife Conservation Group, Sea Shepherd, regularly check the nets and baited hooks for any sign of trapped marine life. About a year and a half ago, uh, our crew found a baby dolphin on one of these drum lines. Uh, that baby dolphin was, um, was hooked through, through uh, the flesh on, on its stomach and uh, we have images of that, uh, really quite traumatic images, with um, the mother dolphin actually underneath that baby dolphin bringing her up to the surface to breathe and this went on for uh, several hours until she could be released. But Neil and Lisa Edmonds, who lost their son Peter at Lighthouse Beach in 2008, welcome the netting plans. They hope the government will make good on their promise to put human lives first. Well, if it happened to them, would they be the same? That's what we're trying to get out there, is have a bit of... Um, compassion. Remorse and compassion. Have some compassion. And yeah. It's not anybody's fault. No. It's not anybody's fault. Um, yes, you're in their environment, mm. but it's also a shared environment, you know. Mm. It's like crossing the road, you know, that's a, a shared facility. With emotions running high, the prospect of a great white shark cull becomes more likely. But some believe that by harming them, we are harming ourselves. You take away the sharks, you ruin the uh, marine environment. You, you, you change, change the balance and uh, you, you affect, it, the, 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 it cascades through, through the food chain when you don't have the apex predators there. As Australians grapple with the changing environment, they may be forced to adapt their lifestyle and forge new relationships with the ocean that surrounds their continent.